guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna do just a little try to get ready with me while I answer your questions. I had asked a little while ago on a previous video and then also on my Instagram for you guys to ask me some questions. And I was pretty nervous to do so just because I know we're a very small family here. Monday was three months since I've started my channel. So I wanna say thank you to everyone who did participate. It means a lot to me. And before we get into this video, I do wanna tell you guys, I already filmed this on Tuesday and I hated the way my makeup looked. You'll see in today's video, which is a collab video, I say that I filmed two videos that day and I totally did and I hated it so much. I'll get more into the reasons why, but I have decided to refilm it. I'm about to go to work, so today's look will be a little bit more toned down. And I also wanted to tell you guys too, I had mentioned showing what I got George for our one year anniversary. If you haven't heard me talk about my dog Lucy before or how much we absolutely adore her, we're both obsessed with her. And the one year anniversary is the paper gift, so I thought that this was absolutely perfect. I'm surprised I never thought of it before. But I got him a portrait of our little girl. How cute is that? And it looks exactly like her. I'm going to go ahead and tag the artist down below. He goes by the name of LL Illustrations. He has a shop on Etsy as well as a YouTube channel. And he actually sent me the link of a sped up version of him drawing this that I thought was really cool. So if you have a furry friend that you want a portrait of or if you want to gift it to somebody, he does incredible work. And I will tell you the shipping was so fast. Like I felt like I placed my order and it was at my doorstep. I don't know what his normal turnaround time is, especially during the holiday season, but it came to me so fast fast. Let's get into this makeup. I'm going to just wet my little sponge here. I'm going to use the Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist. I am currently panning this. Let me move this portrait out of the way first. That's been the easiest way for me to try to use this up. And I'm also just going to pin my little bangs back. I just got my hair cut and whenever I get my bangs done, they're always like, hello. So <laughs> I kind of have to train them to go the right way. I really need to get myself one of those little baby straighteners because the look is not cute. So I am about to go into work. So today's look is going to be a little bit more toned down, maybe a little bit less colorful. We'll see what I create, but I probably won't do lashes be a very soft glam. I also just got soft glam. Does anyone have that palette? Let me know what you think about it. I haven't tried it yet. I love ABH shadows in general, so I'm really looking forward to dipping into it. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. And I hope you guys don't mind. I will be playing with Alien again. I just haven't gotten to play with all the colors in here, and I wanted to see what kind of toned down look I could create. So what happened, what had happened the other day I used Area 51 and I also used Phone Home, but I'm pretty sure Area, Area 51 was the culprit. It, it did not work well. Uh, I've watched other tutorials and people seem to use it fine, so I don't know if I just got a bad one, but I was so disappointed and I filmed this whole video and it I struggled, like it didn't really look good, but it looked even worse when I went to edit it like I just couldn't ignore it and I want to be honest with you guys and I want to show you when something doesn't work but this was a get ready with me it wasn't like a product tutorial and it looked so bad that I just couldn't put it up and I really meant to save a portion of that to show you guys the struggles that I had but I deleted it and completely forgot so what happened with it, every time I would place the shadow down and go to blend it out, it would disappear. And it looked so patchy by the time I was done with it. I also had it on my lid and I kept pressing it on and it would fade. And I was like, okay, well today is my second video that I'm filming. Maybe my eyelids are really dry. I do get some eczema on my eyelids and I thought maybe that was it. And I went to try it a second time the next night just playing around. So. That look I had on for like three hours and I left it on and I, you know, just started editing something else and it came off fine. So then the next night I went to try it out again just to see if it was me or if maybe it was my dry lids and it happened again just as bad. I only did one eye but the funny thing was I had it on for like five seconds afterwards. I immediately removed it with a makeup wipe it stayed my eyelid and I think it's gone now you can't see but all day yesterday this eye was slightly pink on the top 
So I thought that was really strange that it stained that second time when I only had it on for a few minutes. But I was really disappointed. This shade is gorgeous, that Area 51. And I was really hoping to make it work. So I think I will probably use it just for more under eye or I will use it for like liner. Maybe I'll do that today because I think I kind of want to do just a bright liner. I don't fully know yet. So it was just weird that first time that I used this palette, I experienced no issue. So I'm really just hoping it's that Area 51 shade and I don't struggle with any of the others. Space Cowboy was a really weird one too. Like when I went to go, that's this one here, I'll show it to you guys. When I went to put that on my lid, it just looked different in the camera. I just couldn't post it, I'm sorry. Maybe one day I'll feel more comfortable, but it was so bad I couldn't get over it. All right, let's get into some of these questions. I will be answering all the questions. No one asked me anything too crazy, but some of you guys did ask me more than one question. I will be answering all of them. They just might not be in order. So the first question comes from Rebecca here on YouTube or Simply Glammed. We actually post a collab today. She asked me why I started YouTube and I actually talked about this before in another Get Ready With Me. And there's a couple reasons why. It could be a very long answer for me. But the basic of it is I just really love helping other people feel beautiful. I love the fact that YouTube is a huge community and if and someone can watch my video and learn how to do something new or gain some kind of confidence, because trust me, I do not have all the confidence in the world. Being here on front of the camera and posting it is horrifying. So if someone can watch a video of mine and get something from it, learn something from it, whatever it may be. And then the longer answer would be to jump out of my comfort zone. I've always been someone who really sticks with safe and secure in my little bubble. That's always been me and I don't often jump outside of that box and YouTube was just a very clear way to do that. I wanted to start a channel a few years back where I was watching all of IMDb's top 250 and that's not a unique idea. A lot of people have done that video but it would be like my own spin on it. And my husband and I have still talked about that. Actually, it was one of the first things we did talk about. He created like a little blog about it and we never did it, but it was an idea and I just never really had the guts to go through with it. And it just kind of felt like now or never, at least for me. And I know if I kept putting it off, I would never do it. And I have to say, in the three months that I've been on YouTube, I have learned so much. Confidence-wise, yes, because I've put myself out there. And I'm putting myself out there for judgment and opinions and all of that. And just learning to take things with a grain of salt. I really haven't gotten too much hate here on YouTube. More in like my personal life. Not like a lot of hate, but just people being like kind of condescending. So I've been pretty fortunate there. I haven't dealt with too much yet, but I know it will come the more my channel grows and I'm just gonna have to learn to roll with the punches. And then apart from that too, just the editing and the time management and the social media managing and all of that, I have learned so much. I have no regrets about starting my channel and I only hope to keep going and to keep moving along and to keep learning and to keep growing because I am really enjoying it. And I'm just gonna blend those two out. I have all my brushes here and I try to keep them really organized, but I can never find the brush that I need. It's like YouTube struggles. This shade may be too dark, but we're gonna try it out. This is Ghost OG. So Rebecca also asked me, how did you get into makeup initially? And honestly, I do not know. I haven't said this before, but I was raised by my loving uncle and aunt, and my aunt didn't really wear a lot of makeup. I mean, she does wear a little bit like for work or special occasions, but not like I wear makeup, and so does my mom. My mom's got even into more makeup uh, now, now that she gets a Birchbox and FabFitFun, so she's gotten more into makeup even in the past few years, but not the way that I wear it, and I have a younger sister. I don't have an older sister, so I don't have anyone that really wore it before I did and the only thing I can think of is really from magazines it was really before YouTube was all over the place beauty YouTube wasn't the way that it is now and I remember seeing magazines and there were tutorials in there and like the best of like the uh, what you should buy the best of whatever year it was 
what certain celebrities were wearing. And I talked about this briefly in my drugstore video, I think, where I was talking about how my grandfather would always give me 20 bucks when I would go over there on the weekends and I would always buy makeup with it. I've just always been fascinated by makeup. And I think a big part of it too is that I've considered myself to be a pretty creative person, even when I'm not actively creating art, like I haven't painted something in a really long time, um, but I've always loved art and poetry and I feel like makeup is just an extension of that creativity. And makeup is the one passion that I've really have stuck with over the years. This mat so far has been working pretty well too. I was a little worried because Area 51 is a darker mat and I was hoping it wasn't all the dark mats in this palette. But so far, I'm not having any trouble with this one, and we are almost towards the end of this. I just need to blend that out and make things a little bit more even. Okay, so next, my girl Trinity. Hi, Trinity. She asked, if you could make your own palette, what colors, schemes, and finishes would it include? And we actually talked about this not too long ago. This is gonna be kind of boring. It would definitely probably be a warm tone palette. Those are just the kind of colors that I like. When I look at my house, I do have a lot of grays and neutrals and beiges, but I also really like gemstone colors. So like deep purples, I love burnt orange, burgundies, jades, emeralds, those kind of colors. I also really like mustard yellow, especially in an eyeshadow. So it would be kind of in that realm. I'm also big on golds, not so much into silver. So that would be the general feel. And as far as finishes go, obviously mattes where it makes sense for transitions and to deepen up. I do really like a good shimmer. And then I really love Shifty Shades. You guys saw when I was looking at that Pat McGrath uh, shadow not too long ago in the, I was at the Mothership Bronze Ambition, one of those palettes. I could not stop looking at that green and red that, ooh, like I was so obsessed with it. I love a good shifty shade, so I would definitely include some of those. And maybe not like chunky glitter, but just very foiled. Those tend to be the kind of feels that I go for. And then more than that too, Trinity and I were also talking about this. I don't really care about making a palette. I just care about naming the shades. Like if I could find a job where I make a million dollars, well, I don't really need a million. If I could make a livable income off of naming eyeshadows and lipsticks, I would be set. I would be in my happy place. So I don't know what I want to do for my lid shades. So let's see what these look like. This is Interstellar. It's really pretty. UFO I played with the other day. That's a little bit more gold. There's also Moon Rock, which I remember not being super pigmented. And then we have Probe too. I think I'm going to go in with Interstellar. Just because I can't help myself, I want to take Area 51 and I just want to put it a little bit in the center of my lid. I could really regret it. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna use my finger. Okay, so Polly asked, hi Polly. What's your all time favorite makeup product if you could only pick one? That's really hard. I don't know if I have an all time favorite product. Maybe like a favorite category. Like if I think about my like desert island makeup, like what I would take with me, I would love to say something glamorous, like a glitter liner or even just like a brow product. But in all reality, it would probably be Tarte Shape Tape because I feel like the second that I was like, oh, something that would give me long lashes, my face would be like, oh, here's 10 pimples. <laughs> I feel like realistically, with the dark circles that I have and the, some of the discoloration, it would have to be Tarte Shape Tape. I feel like that is a product I have consistently used as well for, since it launched really, I've been using that product. And that was, that's probably what I would have to go with. Although I'm doing a couple of videos very soon, trying out like a new brand I have coming up. I'm trying out ColourPop that's coming up soon. So maybe my mind will be changed. I just dipped into that like ever so slightly. I'm so scared that I'm gonna have a repeat of the other day. So we're gonna leave that be, just doing a little bit. And then wet, I'm going to use Interstellar on my little spectrum brush that I always talk about. Maybe I won't do it wet. I'm just gonna try it on my pinky first. And then Polly also asked me, do you plan on doing a year-end favorites video? Yep, I totally do. 
the day you asked me that I actually had just created my December schedule so it's looking like it's going to be the last week of December I think or maybe the week of Christmas but it is coming I will definitely be doing that video I'm already starting to think about what I want to include like when I'm in the shower I'm like oh the shampoo needs to go in there I will probably start creating it pretty soon and I thought about doing like a failed and holy grailed but I think I'm just gonna keep it nice and positive and I will be doing a year-end favorites not like the worst of 2018 or anything like that just the things that I really liked okay so that's blending over pretty so far let's see if we can get this one little patchy area Okay, so it just added like a little bit of dimension. Crossing my fingers that the other one goes the same way. <laughs> this one I have to read from just because it is a little bit longer. She also asked, would you plan to consider doing a video in which you use your favorite products in each category, including primer and setting spray? Totally, we must be like eye and eye because that video was actually planned like a week or two ago and I just did something else I can't remember what it was and it got moved so I can't remember if I have it in December or I have it in January I think it's in January but I will totally be doing that video as well the thing is one of my favorite palettes the one I'm currently panning it's back here it's modern renaissance and I've been doing so many looks with that I've also done things that kind of look like it like I used that little wet and wild uh, rose in the air and I don't want to be too repetitive on this channel so by then I could have a different favorite palette too but right now it's modern renaissance and I just didn't want to be creating the same look over and over again but it will be coming I will be doing that video yeah Did I just bring over one yeah I just brought over one this is the touch and soul no problem I just got a backup of this as well in my fab fit fun box I'm gonna be opening that up on Monday and filming it so I'm excited about that. I'm trying to get myself to the place where I am filming one week and then posting it the next week so that it's not like, okay, I have two days to film and edit this video. It's just been kind of hard to get my third video out every week. But after this week, after my collab with Rebecca, I will have videos posted Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, or at least that is the schedule I am aiming for. I have said before, I do work retail and my schedule varies and it's just kind of hard for me to say a specific time because I feel like I even though I can schedule my video I feel like I need to be able to check it at that time and because I work retail I may not always be able to so I won't have a specific time you guys know I generally post in the morning this video you guys will probably see tomorrow night though because I'm filming it and I have tonight after work to edit it and the tomorrow morning before work to edit it so cross your fingers for me I really hope you guys get to see this on Saturday I will do my best also from Trinity she said what is your all-time favorite foundation that you find gives your skin a smooth natural finish and it's not too cakey this one the one I'm gonna use today this is the Laura Mercier flawless fusion ultra long wear foundation and I wear mine in the shade cameo I absolutely love this foundation this is the one that I wear if I know I need to have my face looking good for a while. I am not a foundation everyday kind of person. I generally wear a tinted moisturizer, but this is the one that I pull out if I know that I need it to last. One, I just think it's a good shade match for me. But also, oh, I forgot to say, I wanted to try it out with a brush today. I'm gonna pull that out and just restart. Um, this is a, a cosmetics buffing foundation brush. I think that's what it's called or something similar to that. It's got like a round edge. I would generally use my Real Technique sponge for foundation, but I just wanted to start trying to use up some of these foundation brushes I have. But anyway, I really like the coverage of this foundation. It's not too matte, not too dewy. It's kind of like right in between. But my favorite thing about this foundation is I feel like once it starts to wear, it doesn't crack and it never looks cakey. More than anything, it just fades, which I would much prefer if my foundation is going to show any kind of wear. It is quite pricey. I wanna say it's 48 for the bottle, but I've had this since summertime. And like I said, I use foundation very sparingly. So for me, it is worth the price and I absolutely adore it. I like using a sponge for my forehead just because it's very dry and I find that using a brush tends to flake things up a little bit. 
She also asked, what is the product you've tried that you think is so not worth the hype? This one, the one I'm currently panning. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. Not that I hate it and I don't think it's an awful product, but I just don't think it's worth the hype. There's definitely times where I have tried it out with particular foundations and it looks really cakey, which is, I don't know. I don't know why people rave about it the way they do. A lot of people love it. I just have had, personally, I feel like better loose setting powders. I did realize, even though I'm panning this one, I do also have a travel size of it to go through. It's not something that I'm like, oh, don't buy it. I never use it again. I just don't think it's worth the hype that it gets. I think it's just okay. And like I said, with certain foundations, you do have to be careful with it. Oh, I just thought of another product too. Um, Dior Dior Show. I don't know if it gets that much like accolade now that it used to, but at once upon a time I worked right across from Sephora and I didn't make a lot of money at the time. Not like I make millions now, but I didn't make a lot of money at that time and I saw Dior Show all over the place. It was in every magazine, everyone raved about it. It was like a very much a cult product and it was expensive. I think now it's probably like just a little bit under 30. I don't remember what it was at the time, but it was a very expensive product for me to buy. And one, it smells like a straight up a flower, like the straight up flower bed, which I love floral scents, but I don't want that on my eyeballs. And then two, it's very clumpy. So definitely a product that I just don't really understand. I think it's really just the name, like so many things are. I didn't realize I still had foundation on my hand. I have about a half an hour before I have to leave, so the rest is going to be pretty quick. For my brows, I am going to use this from Milk. It's a Kush Fiber Brow Gel. And that is what I use most days. It is so quick. My brows really need to be done right now. I really need to wax them. I thought I got some on my uh, skin there and it's not, it's just a hair that needs to be tweezed. So I said in another video that I was going to be using the Hourglass Ambient Edit Volume 4 in another video. I have pretty much been using it every day since that video. As you can see from all the fingerprints, the only thing I don't like about this packaging, it is pretty but it is messy. But I have been loving this little palette so far. Since we're moving on to bronzer next, Erin asked me, what's your favorite bronzer stick? It is this one from Milk. This is the matte bronzer in the shade Baked. I believe they have two different shades. I really don't own a lot of bronzers. I have just really gotten into bronzing this year. I had like a, one or two of them beforehand and I would contour every now and then, but usually I just wear blush on my cheeks, but I have definitely been getting into bronzer more this year i have about six of them that i really like now and i really love the shade of this one i think it is so pretty but that little matte bronzer from milk is quite nice as well i feel like it doesn't get blotchy on the skin and it blends out very easily and it is very light and buildable which is pretty much everything i could ask for from a cream product I tend to get nervous with creams especially blushes because you can do your whole face and then just ruin your makeup <laughs> And then on a fluffier brush, I'm just gonna do the rest of my face. It's so hard, these pans are so freaking small, so you have to have the right brush to get in there. For blush today, I'm going to go into this little purpley guy here. This is called Strobe Blush. It's a, called a Euphoric Fusion. And it looks like it's going to serve as like a highlight too. Oh, that's so pretty. I've used more of the coral one. I hadn't used this one yet. 
I just saw there's a spot right here where I completely missed my foundation. I'm such a noob. Oh well. That's so pretty. I don't even know if I need highlight. I am gonna dip into the highlight in here. It's the top one, and this is called Strobe Powder, Euphoric Strobe Light. I think it's actually what is swirled into the blush I just used. Just using a little bit because that blush has so much going on for it. I don't know, I don't even know if I'm going to do liner today. I may use a little bit and just smudge it. Let's see, I have this from Stila. This is the Smudge Kajal Liner and I haven't done this on the top of my lid, so we'll see. Usually I use this in my waterline. It has a little smudgy brush on it. Want a little bit of definition. I don't want to take away from the shadows. This brush is rough feeling. Hold on, I'm gonna have to do this off camera. I just did that on my top. I did some on my waterline and then also on my tight line and I'm just smudging it out along my bottom lower. So under eye, I'm going to take Phone Home, which was that lilac kind of shade, and blend it out with that liner. Need something a little more smudgy. Really bringing that down and around. And then I'm going to use Interstellar on the same brush. I'm just cleaning it off real quick. And I'm gonna use that on the inner part of the lower, just to kind of replicate what we did up top. This is gonna need some, I don't have Fix Plus, so I'm gonna use this one. I do have Fix Plus, I'm just trying to use this one up. This palette, something I will say about it that is awesome, there's very little fallout. I really didn't experience much at all today. I'm gonna to take some of the shade Pluto on a pencil brush, and I'm using that as underbrow highlight. Such a good shade for underbrow, and I'm gonna take a little bit and put it in my corner too. You know what I have that I forgot I wanna use? Another product I am panning from Stila is the Cloud Shimmer and Glow, and this is like a lilac kind of color, and I'm almost out of it. Like I have to dip into the middle. Let's see if I can get some on my hand, and I'm gonna apply it with the pencil brush too to my inner corner. Just for a little pop of something. These dry so fast, so you have to work very quickly. looks pretty. I think I need more. It already dried. I think that just gave it a little something extra. I'm going to use Milk Makeup Kush Mascara next. I love this mascara. I still want a full size of it. I just have a few others to get through first. That's a pretty big difference. Moving on. 
I think I'm gonna take these out just so they don't get weird. I am going to go ahead and put some of this on my skin. Sometimes I like to do my setting spray before my lipstick. This is Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist and I have been obsessed with this, like I keep saying in all my videos. It's just so good, any little spots. It is pretty fine though. I don't usually have too many of them. From Trinity, she asked, what color, lip, what lip color do you absolutely adore? This one, this is from a brand that does not get a lot of love. I feel like on YouTube, it's from Aveda. This is called Kana, and I am absolutely obsessed with this lipstick. This is actually the reformulation of it. The lip liner that I have here is a little bit closer to the original Kana. So I'm gonna use that first. A lot of times too, when I would wear this, I would just wear, I only get this outline done. So a lot of times when I would wear this, I would just wear a lip liner. And then once my lips started to feel dry, I would go in with the lipstick. This new formulation of the lipstick is a little bit darker. You can see how much like orange is in this red. Honestly, this is the first red lip color that I ever put on that I felt beautiful in. Like, I feel like once you find that red, cause reds are a little scary. And I feel like once you find that red that just does something for you, this does something just for my skin. I feel like it just brightens my skin. And I absolutely love it. I get compliments on it every time I wear it. There's nothing else like it. And right now I have just this lip liner, which is limited edition. I think it came out like two summers ago. And I have two backups of it. Like I love it so much, but I haven't worn it in a while. So there's the lip liner on its own. I made a little bit of a mistake and hit it with some concealer. And then here is the lipstick. Again, it's a little bit more red than it used to be. And it's also less matte than it used to be. I just love that shade. Thank you so much, Trinity, for reminding me. I always just feel so pretty when I wear this lip color. I love it. It's actually gonna go right back into my makeup bag before I forget about it. And here is the completed look. Thank you for getting ready for work with me. And thank you to anyone who participated. I really appreciated it. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment below. I think it's time to ask you guys some questions. One, what is your favorite palette? And then two, what do you wanna see from me next? I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.